you would back off, you would think, oh, should I, shouldn't I? But at that point, it's too late. Jason is so experienced and he has a racer's instinct. He saw the gap, his plan A, his, his initial strategy out, out the window, this is what I'm doing now. And, and that's, that's why he's a, a seven time Olympic champion. Yeah. You know, he's made history there. Let's, uh, I mean, you predicted him to win. Did you predict anything like that in your mind, even when you saw it happening? In fact, even when you saw it happening, you weren't believing it, actually. No, no, it was, <laughs> I mean, yeah, as we say, it, it just never happened. So it's, it's, <laughs> and that's why it's a gambling sport, the Kieran, you know, that, that is, that's the reason. So many variables and, and you have to have, you know, you do all the training because you have to have the power and the speed, but it's also just, it's racer's instinct, it's, it's race craft. And that's what, that's what Jason managed to, to pull out the bag there. But I mean, he'd come in, he'd put the big old gear on the bike. I mean, he was here in the team's right, but he was, he was here to win the gold tonight, really. But getting on the podiums, did not what he came here to do. I think at the start of the, the you know, after the first race in the first round where he, he went out or had to go back to the repechage, if you'd said yeah. to him, how about a bronze medal? I think he'd have been quite happy with that, even just making the final at that stage. But he, he rode himself back into the competition. And he's done that before at world championship level. Even in Rio, I think, he went out in the repechage or he had to go back in through the repechage. So he does take time um, in the Kieran. And, you know, yeah. I think that semi-final he came in. We saw on the camera the shot in the track centre. He was on the rollers, warming down after the semi-final. He was smiling. And when you, you know, you can tell with Jason, he doesn't smile for, for, for no reason. He's, he's the kind of guy that often hides his emotions, but he was beaming from ear to ear. And that's a sign of a relaxed, confident athlete who's, who's ready and, and on their game. Amazing. Well, the other gold medal that's been won tonight was Kelsey Mitchell in the women's sprint. Uh, and she's been talking to Jill. Many congratulations. Uh, we saw what that meant to you as you crossed the line. It's been a fantastic sprint competition for you, hasn't it? Yeah, yeah, it's been... You know, I'm used to the nine sprints in a day, and so this was a little bit more spaced out, which was nice, but it's a lot of warm-ups, and it's like uh, trying to get the fuel in and trying to get the sleep in, and it's almost kind of a marathon more than a sprint in a way, and so... Yeah, I'm happy that I had the energy coming into today and I felt pretty good, so yeah. An Olympic champion, you've only been racing on the track for a short time. Just how special is it to finish this competition like this? Yeah, it's, uh, yeah. it's amazing. I mean, I have the biggest support system and like my teammates and coach and staff and everyone. It's just like, it's such a team effort and like, I obviously want to win it for me, but I want to win it for them. And just all the hard work that's gone into the past However many years, like I just joined four years ago, but people have been at it for so long and just, yeah, it's a, it's a big win for Canada in general and then Cycling Canada, Team Canada and my teammates that we've, we've just been working so hard and pushing each other. And so, yeah, it was a team victory for sure. Well done, congratulations. Thank you, Thank you so much, I appreciate Thank it. You. That, that is lovely because, yes, it's a great individual victory, but she's very keen to make it seem that it's, that it's a big victory for Canada. It is, and it's, I've, I've followed um, both her and Jenny's progress on social media over the last couple of years, and you can see how much they enjoy their training and that they enjoy their sport. And when you, when you have fun, you know, it makes it so much easier. You've got to have your passion for, for what you do, and she clearly has that. And obviously that is Christina Vogel's work. In fact, as, as Christina pointed out earlier, she's not taking that title from her. She is just becoming an Olympic champion in her own right. Mm. But, uh, you know, a lovely, worthy successor. <laughs> yes, exactly, and I'm sure Christina will be would have been watching tonight and yeah. cheering her on, and you know, passing on the, the mantle to the to the next champion. And you know, as you say, um, Kelsey's adding her name to the list of Olympic champions, and she'll be an Olympic champion herself forever. Um, so yeah, I think Christina will be will have been proud of that performance. Amazing. All right. Well, we're waiting for Jason Kenny to get his gold medal. That ceremony's coming up uh, shortly. He's, <laughs> he's got to get life back in his legs or whatever, and this voice back and, you know, come back off the clouds. Um, of course, the, the, there's one more final to come, and it involves his, his incredible wife. Um, so he's got that. It's live. Laura. You gave yourself a mountain to climb in that last race. Uh, just take us through today's competition. Well, you might as well end the year the way you started it, eh? So you just couldn't make it up. Um, after that, I mean, I hit him so fast because obviously I was just about to come over and then I was just like, bam, like I literally had nowhere to go. Um, and then, yeah, like you said, I had a mountain to climb. I think the tempo race, I just rode off adrenaline and then we only had 20 minutes. And when I got into the elimination race, I couldn't have felt any further away from me if I tried. Like, when I set off, I just felt really tired, like, instantly. And I just thought, this is bad. And then I always ride on the inside when my legs are hurting. 
even though in my head I'm saying you need to get out because you are in the worst place. But you can't do anything because all you're thinking is make it easy, make it easy. Um, and then in the points race, well, I had nothing to lose. Um, I just wish we'd got a lap and then obviously I'd have jumped up the standings. Listen, it wasn't to me, but you've had a gold and a silver medal at these games. Reflect on that because you, know, you come in with so much expectation on your shoulders. Yeah, I mean, I think, to be honest, I was done after the Madison. Um, you just hit such a high. And, like, that really was the race that we targeted. Um, we'd put so much work into that. And I think because we did win, I could just go, job done. Um, and obviously to then refocus and come back into an omelette, where you are on your own as well. It's not like you've got your teammates there supporting you. Yeah, it just wasn't to me, like you say. And just before you got up for that last effort, you see Jason win his seventh gold medal. What I was mean, that like? Unbelievable. Honestly, the amount of people that come up to me afterwards and was like, I'd have counted him out of this. And to be honest, so would I have. <laughs> like just speaking to him last night, he was just like, I just want to go home. And then obviously when he went, I was like, he's only gone and done it. Like, it's just typical Jason, that. I love it. And you've got some lovely... Uh, medals to take back to Albia. I, I know it makes you cry every time I mention them, but you must be so looking forward to heading oh, home. Oh, so I literally cannot wait. Like, I came in earlier and I was like, last day? Like, honestly, it's been... It feels like a really long two weeks, to be honest, and I think it is made worse because obviously Albia's at home. And when do you start thinking about what's next? Well, I mean, Wells isn't that far away, is it? <laughs> um, I don't know. I can't see myself quitting any time soon. We certainly hope not, Laura. Thank you so much. Well done. <laughs> Thank you. Cheers. Thanks. I mean, what a lovely interview. What a, a just, yeah, just... The, the, uh, it's the highs and lows of sport. I mean, they are taking two golds and two silvers home to the Kenny household. Uh, of course, because uh, in the, uh, the Kieran earlier, uh, Jason Kenny won his uh, historic gold, making him the most successful British Olympian of all time. Uh, and after he received that gold in the podium, Jill Douglas caught up with him. Huge congratulations, that was very special. First of all, tell us how you won that race. When did that plan come into effect? Uh, well, I really didn't want to be in one, to be honest. But the one, the one advantage of being in one is you might be able to disappear off the front. So it was the last thought I said to Jan before the start. I, was, I said, you know, if, if I get a gap, should I go? And he not very convincingly just said, oh, if it's a big one. <laughs> and I was, the first half of the lap, I was kind of looking at it going, is it big enough? Is it big enough? And then I was just like, oh, sorry, it's now or never, so that was it. And you've rode into this, you've got better and better as the week's gone on. Yeah, I mean, I've just been racing every race like it's my last, just uh, just trying to survive, really. So, And I think, you know, because I rode every round like a final, by the time I got to the final, I was pretty well rehearsed. Uh, it was maybe some of the other lads have been holding back a little bit. Um, and so, yeah, for me, once we rolled up in the final, it was just kind of carry on what we've been doing. And, uh, and what will be, will be, really. Seven gold medals, the most successful British Olympian. It's incredible. I feel as though I should have Steve Redgrave, Chris Hoy and Bradley Wiggins here to congratulate you. When you think about what you've achieved, just give us some sense of, of how proud you are of what you've been able to do. Yeah, it, it, it's, it's really special. You know, every time we come back, it's funny, when you look back on the ones you've already got, it seems really easy. And then when you try and get more, it just, it just seems unbelievable. You remember how hard it was, you know, it's like you always look back with all tinted glasses. And, um, and I think that's a little bit of something that we battle in Bertie Cycling every, every time we come back to the Olympics. We always look back four years and it always looks really easy, you know, on the videos it looks easy, doesn't it? And, and it's easy to forget the hard work that goes into it. And, and so, yeah, it's just constantly going through that hard work, always trying to be four years better. And, um, and you know, I've been disappointed this week, really. I wasn't as competitive as I wanted to be. Um, but in the Kieran's you can, you can, you can race hard and, and kind of ride your luck a little bit and, and we popped out the other end. I couldn't believe that no one came past. I, I felt like I was standing still around that last corner, I was hacking away. But I just kept telling myself, you know, it's a medal, it's a medal, even if one comes, it's still a medal. And then when I crossed the line, I was like, oh, it's a bloody gold medal. <laughs> so yeah, couldn't believe it, but yeah, just, just bizarre, amazing. So you've both got golds to take home to Albi, he'll be watching, I bet he was on the, the edge of his seat. I hope he's in bed, he should be in bed really, but um, yeah, hopefully, you know, he's been getting into it a little bit now, he's free, going on four, so he's, he's like, he likes watching it and on the telly, so yeah, that's, that's nice. Moment, can you start thinking about what's next? Can we expect to see you in uh, Paris? Well, before today I'd all but given up, to be honest, I was sort of counting my careers in days and races as opposed to years, 
Uh, but, you know, maybe I bought myself a bit more time now. I don't know. <laughs> Thanks, Jason. Thank Cheers, you thank much. you. I mean, what a couple. Uh, I mean, you, oh, it's just beautiful, isn't it? Although Laura doubted him, you didn't. You married the wrong, <laughs> yeah. married the wrong person. He needs to listen to me. He needs to listen. <laughs> I sent him a text message um, yesterday saying, Jason, basically, I believe in you. You can do this. You know, just give it your all. And do you know what he came back with? What? He said, thanks, Mum. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to be all, you know, this is it. You know, give him some sort of, stir him up a bit. And yeah, that's what he came back with. But wow. That's Jason for you. Um, yeah, I mean, just that there are, I mean, you all are, in fairness. All those great Olympians seem to be the most lovely people. I mean, uh, it's, what... all, it's all a front. We're all horrible. Yeah, all I horrible. don't We're believe it for a people. second. Yeah, yeah. There they are. <laughs> there they are. My name's not anywhere near that. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, wow. And to think, I mean, yeah, Jason Kenny and Laura Kenny, 12 gold medals between them going home. I mean, that is just, it's just unbelievable. I, I, I just can't think of any other couple in sport that have yeah. achieved even half what they've achieved. I mean, it's, it's and, there, and there is more to come, you know, whether Jason continues or not, I don't know. Laura definitely will. And, and they just, they do... They do themselves proud, they do their country proud every time they get on the track, whether they win or lose. And it's, yeah, it's just, it's a pleasure to be able to sit here and, and commentate and, and be a pundit for their amazing performances. Absolutely. I believe there is a, a couple from the Winter Olympics that they're, that they're drawn equal with, I think, in terms of, of uh, gold. But that is just unbelievable. And as I say, you know, two very different characters, but nonetheless just clearly very grateful to get to do what they do. Well, they love what they do. And Jason doesn't always convey how much he enjoys riding his bike, but he does. And the reason he's back here winning these medals is because he had some time out after Rio and he missed it. And he enjoyed, he was out riding his bike just for fun. We'd go out and bike rides and just, you know, he would just, just turning his legs, but not thinking about the Olympic games. And he missed it and he's come back to it and he's got a new perspective. And it just shows even when he thinks he's not in the best form, he can still beat everybody else in the whole world. Uh, and the fact that he, he's, you know, taken that title off of you. Uh, <laughs> but in it such... Was kind of, in... It wasn't even mine. We, we were already drawn in it, you know. Plus he had the silver, so technically he was already oh, the most yes, successful. Very good. But he did it in the most spectacular fashion as well. I he mean, uh, I think we can watch it back now. Uh, because, I, I, yeah, this won't be the last time I watch this today. It was, it was. It's going to be watched so many times today and so many times over the next, well, three years. I'm never going to get bored watching that. That was, yeah. it was incredible. And it, he opened up the gap and it wasn't as if then they started chipping away. He kept extending the lead and it just shows Glatzer couldn't even hold the pace that Jason was, was attacking at. Glatzer went back through the bunch. I've never seen as big a distance from the first to the last rider at the end of a Kieran race. It looked like it was a bunch race. I, I know as athletes, as, well, as broadcasters, we always do that. You're going to go to the next games, all that sort of stuff. I mean, they've not had a chance to even sort of enjoy it. But <laughs> yeah. this is such a unique games in the fact that it is only three years to mm. the next one. So mm -hmm. that's the reason we're asking mm. you. Uh, I mean, it, so he said there, 2017, that he thought about giving it up. We've heard Laura say that she will continue. Mm -hmm. I mean, what, what's your instinct about, about where he sits? I think he'll, he will not think too far ahead. He'll just take it one year at a time. And he's an, he's an asset to, to the team, obviously, because he can win races. But yeah. he's also an asset because of his ex experience and his, just what he brings to the team as a, you know, the team captain, really, for the sprinters. So they will want to try and keep him in the ranks, keep him you know, in, enthusiastic and engaged and enjoying his racing. So it'll be one race or one season at a time. They might race the Worlds in eight weeks' time. They might not. They might have a little break. I expect them to have a break after this five-year cycle. But, you know, I, I, I would not have put a five-pound bet on Jason continuing after this until that Kieran final. And now, who knows? He, he, he has the legs. If he still enjoys it, he'll keep going. Well, the British cycling team has certainly had a very successful time, not just in the velodrome, but actually everywhere. Uh, and Stephen Parr is the performance director, and he is with Jill Douglas. Future, really, you know, we're, we're, we're desperate now to roll into Paris. We've got the Commonwealth Games coming out, home Commonwealth Games. Then, of course, we go to Glasgow in 23 for a, for a multi-discipline world championship. Before we know, we're going to be in Paris. So it's going to be a pretty busy few years. Take the night off, Sparky. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thanks very much. Thank you. Well, he's a happy man and for good reason, isn't he? He is, and it makes a change. You know, most of the World Championships and World Cups, it's, 
you know, it's like, oh, we're looking forward, we're going to peak at the right time, and and the team has peaked at the right time, and it's it's it is a team effort, and we say it time and time again, but it's worth repeating. It's the coaches, it's the the management, it's the the mechanics, it's every single person who works so hard. They give their all, they give their time, they give their effort to ensure that the team is prepared and, and ready for when when it really counts. And it's yeah, the, the whole team has delivered. Um, is that what you expected? coming into these games? It, it is, and I don't want to blow my own trumpet, but I said at the start, I said a you know three, what he's talking about. three or four gold medals, and I thought they'd be top nation overall. And, and although I admit, I didn't expect, I, I've had the women's omnium with Laura mm -hmm. and the women's team pursuit as the two gold bankers. And I thought a, a medal, an outside chance of a medal in the men's Kieran, but it all worked out in the end. And uh, <laughs> yeah, what, what an exciting, um, you know, a roller coaster. It's been, you know, it just the, the, it's just been the most incredible week of competition, um, and great to see some some new names coming through, some younger riders coming through, and obviously the old ones performing well as well. And it's not just about the velodrome as well. I mean, you famously started your life out in a BMX, of course, and isn't it just so exciting to see new names, new sports, essentially coming through, reaching a whole new audience. And um, I think the the new, I think BMX freestyle park you know it acquitted itself so well it engaged you know that it, it brought in a whole new atmosphere to cycling as well you know that all the different athletes from different countries were supporting each other obviously competing at the same time yeah. and the performances of the British riders were exceptional um, and to get to sort of contribute that way and to get the, the gold medals rolling at the start really helped the track team it took the pressure off them and, and they delivered too. Well Joe Douglas as we saw is out there Joe it's been a it's been a stunning time in the in the velodrome and 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 tonight especially and, and that's with the highs and the lows. Yeah, it's been incredible. We've had uh, a fantastic competition here, and to see Jason Kenny win that seventh gold medal, you know, I was there in Beijing when he won his first, uh, uh, and it's been an absolute privilege to be trackside to see so many wonderful performances. But yes. Fantastic to see Jason win here. Laura, as competitive as ever and fighting all the way to the end of that Omnium uh, and a cracking women's sprint competition too. So we've seen some great racing here, no, no question about that. In, uh, and an absolute privilege, I've said it before, and, and a great pleasure to be here. And I'm just delighted there's been some fans here as well. That's been really special. Brilliant. Well, Joe, we wouldn't swap you for the world either. <laughs> Thank you so much for bringing us that atmosphere. Uh, and you know, for all your hard work throughout these games in particular, it's been you've been joyous, and you've certainly dug me out of a few holes. <laughs> <laughs> it's been great to be here. <laughs> well, listen, Chris. Uh, yeah, I mean, we were talking about the atmosphere there, uh, and, and so many people ask me about this. In fairness, you know, uh, you know, for the first thing they ask is, what does the velodrome actually look like? Is it as big as it looks <laughs> on the telly? But the thing which which that doesn't get conveyed is just how special the atmosphere can be inside a velodrome. You want to watch it on the BBC, but if you can't <laughs> watch it on the telly, get down a velodrome, experience a major championship live, and you will be hooked because it's it's such a fast, exciting friendly and incredibly noisy and uh, yeah exciting place to be and the other thing we want is for people to get on their bikes not necessarily to have a go of that but to get on their bikes winter's gone by and i just i hope this continues I'm, I'm sure it will we've seen a massive influx of people cycling over the the pandemic and and it's not all about trying to become a future champion hopefully it will inspire a younger generation but also for anybody anyone can ride a bike and um, whether it's for to get in, you know for health and fitness whether it's for commuting whether it's with a, a sporting mind, but you know it's it's for everybody. So yeah, I'm sure this will inspire many more people to get on two wheels. Well, you say that. Um, my daughter learnt to ride her bike over lockdown. There was some very helpful videos on the internet <laughs> by, a, by a cycling champion. Oh, <laughs> thank you very much. I'm delighted. <laughs> balance bikes. That's the that's starting the balance bike. bikes. That's the way. Yeah, right, that's that's the top tip. That's the tip. Right, well, a little earlier, we saw, of course, the women's Omnium, uh, and uh, Jennifer Volante won the USA's first ever, oh, well, the first female to win a uh, championship title at the Olympics, and she's caught up with Jill Douglas. Ready? Well, congratulations. That was very, very impressive. You had to work so hard for that. And on the deck at one point, just how relieved are you in the end to win this medal? Um... Yeah, just relieved for it to be over, but not probably not quite as much as how happy I am. Um, this obviously has been a huge goal for four years and then five years, and I, I just I, I can't even describe how happy I am to have achieved this. In the gold medal position, your heart must have dropped when you 
got involved in the crash. What went through your mind? Um, yeah, you know, definitely crashing is not ever ideal and a lot of people hit the deck in the first race, um, which I'm sure, you know, affected the outcome of the overall result as well. Um, so trying to just ride safe in general. Um, Yumi also hit the deck um, right at the end and, you know, kind of just a battle all the way to the end. You did very well. Thank you very much. Congratulations. Thank you. And the eight-time world. The one medal eluding you to be on the Olympic podium, what did it mean to you? Yeah, a lot. <laughs> I'm super happy, especially uh, after this winter where I struggled so much. Um, I can't believe that I'm on this podium and uh, I'm super happy. And what a wonderful Olympics for this Dutch team. You've really dominated yeah. in so many of the events. Yeah, I feel so proud to, to ride in this kit. And, uh, yeah, Amy and I, we lost it a bit in the medicine. And I, I tried to show that we had a really good level now. And actually, this one is also a bit for Amy and all the riders who helped us with the medicine. I think, um, yeah, we showed that we had a good level. We had just a bit luck and luck. And today, uh, it's a bit more luck. Now, does this bring a curtain down on your career? Well, this brings the curtain down on your career. It's been such an amazing, amazing, successful career. <laughs> yeah, this was one medal I really, really wanted. And that's why I kept riding for a year more. <laughs> and. Uh, yeah, got it. <laughs> well done. Thank you Thank very you. much. Well, Chris, the games that were a year delayed, they almost never happened. Well, yeah. I was about to say we're almost nearly there. You've got a, you've got a long day of of, <laughs> yeah. of talking about what we've just witnessed. Still got another yeah. uh, eight hours to go. Listen, I'll be at home in Scotland before <laughs> you're off air. I think. Um, but what a games it's been. Uh, how much have you enjoyed them? Oh, I, I guess. It could not have been any better. Um, you know, it's what we've all needed, I think. It's, it's been something that a lot of people question whether it was the right thing to do, whether it was appropriate, whether it was safe. And I think the Japanese have done a, an incredible job to, to, to pull this off, to have done it in such a, a magnificent way with all the restrictions and to have all this amazing sport, to see the emotion, to see what it means to the athletes, to have yeah, to have had something positive to, to talk about and think about and be inspired by. It's, I think it's what we've all needed. Um, have you got over Jason yet? <laughs> I wouldn't have got over Jason for another two or three weeks, I think. It was, um, yeah, stunning. And that, the perfect end to the games for the British team, for the cycling team, for, for me personally to watch that. And to, it, yeah, it's just a, a wonderful feeling to, to see someone who is a, a true friend, you yeah. know, taking over the mantle and um, yeah, incredibly proud of him. What are you going to say to him when you, when you finally get a chance to speak to him? Um, I'll probably chat about, you know, motorsport or, you know, his family or something, you know, <laughs> might, might, might mention the Kieran, you know, a couple of, a couple of minutes into the chat. No, I don't, I don't know. I'll be try, trying to give him a call, trying yeah. to get in touch to see how he's getting on. But um, I know what he'll say. He'll go, yeah, it was all right. Thanks, Mum. That was all right. <laughs> Thanks, Mum. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's a little busy right now, quite and rightly so. Uh, and, and also that gives a quick sense of, with sport in particular, the highs and the lows, I've said it lots of times tonight, but you don't, you you forget how good it is, perhaps, until it's gone. Yes, I mean, but equally, it just it brings home, like for me personally, I just yeah. it it makes me it makes you so thankful that you had that opportunity, and, and right. it, you you get to enjoy and reflect and realise, wow, you've been part of something as amazing as this, um, and it's 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 lovely because you get to relive your own moments, reflect on them, and then see other athletes experiencing those same highs and lows, and yeah, it's. You know the times improve and and the, the times move on, but you know this it's the same same emotion, the same joy and despair and everything that goes with it when it goes right and goes wrong. Right, you've got a crack and smile on your face because the other thing is, and you, your wife put a fantastic tweet earlier about it. It's it's seeing it seeing the games from different people's perspective and what it means to them. Yeah, and and it's you know it's not all about the gold medals. It's it's about becoming an Olympian. That's when you when you've become an Olympian. That's something you carry with you for the rest of your life. As we've seen, you know, bronze medals can feel like gold medals depending on your circumstances. You can see how when things have gone wrong, um, it, it seems like the world has ended, but it's, it just shows you what sport means and it shows you how much people invest emotionally and physically into their training and their preparation. Um, and it's, it's a wonderful thing, sport.
Fantastic. Well, thank you so much, Chris, because that was an emotional session and I'm 16 days into this. <laughs> but sitting here next to you, not just your insight, but just the sheer passion that you share for it, it has been an absolute joy. So thank you, sir. Thank you. Well, in the women's volleyball gold medal match in 20, uh, 2008 and uh, 2012, the champions Brazil took on the USA, who remarkably have never won this Olympic title. Now, just quickly, Sam Quek and Kat Dowes will pick up after the match. Uh, so all that remains for me to say is thank you for watching us through the night. And I really mean us. I know I'm just the fool that's out the front, but there is a huge team of people who keep me straight and I cannot thank them enough for, well, helping me achieve my dream of being here. So we hope you've enjoyed some great sport and perhaps more importantly, have been inspired. Uh, in a world that feels divided and at times, well, we've been forced apart, the Olympics has brought us together. So thank you for joining us. The volleyball final is continuing now on the red button and BBC iPlayer and we'll keep you in touch with that here on BBC One.